I, want, I wanted to present myself first. Uh, you have heard a little bit my biography. I understand that next year it will be 40 years that I am researching and in, investigating Tesla's work. As a student, uh, I came for the first time in 1977 into the Nikola Tesla Museum. So I thought at that time that I would spend one month there uh, just working as a demonstrator. But uh, then I prolonged and stayed a few years as a student demonstrator. And after that I started to work uh, permanently in the museum after finishing my studies of mechanical engineering. Uh, at that time I also thought that I will stay maybe one or two years. But uh, as, you, as you can see, next year it will be, I hope, uh, four years of my continual uh, investigation. Why? Why is it so? Uh, Tesla, Nikola Tesla has some kind of, uh, you know, power to, to attract people, to, uh, to be interested in his life, in his work. is really extraordinary life, uh, uh, so dedicated. Tesla didn't have family, didn't have uh, children, uh, didn't have private property. All his life he lived in hotels. And uh, uh, he spent the millions of dollars in the NASA but he had no private property. All his energy he, he put into his, uh, uh, his scientific work. I would also like to tell you something about uh, Nikola Tesla Museum. We are very proud that in Belgrade, in this beautiful villa you can see in this uh, blue paper, uh, we preserve now all Tesla's legacy. Uh, which consists of uh, more than 160,000 original papers, uh, 50,000 clippings which Tesla's secretary collected during his life, 1,000 of books from Tesla's personal library, 1,000 of his personal items, and also in our museum we preserve Tesla's funeral berries. Tesla was cremated after his death and his ashes were transported from the United States to the Belgrade uh, in 1957. Museum is established uh, in 1952. In 1955 it started to work and in 1957 it was completed by transporting Tesla's ashes. And so this is now technical and memorial museum. Also one thing I would like to see uh, tell you that a few years ago uh, Tesla's uh, heritage, Tesla's papers is under the protection of UNESCO. They are now on the list of special uh, heritage of the world, memory of the world list. Few pictures about the Nikola Tesla Museum. Uh, this is a small space, about 1,000 square meters, 300 square meters exhibition, 300 square meters uh, is an uh, administrative area. And 300 square meters in basement is the heart of the museum. So you can see these uh, blue boxes on your uh, right side down. And these are the boxes in, the, in, the, in which we preserve our test documentation. We are also very proud that we have a, a, a special conserve, a laboratory for conservation paper. Uh, last year I visited the Albert Einstein archive in Jerusalem. And I was very proud when I saw that uh, their conservatory laboratory is not better than ours. So <laughs> it's very important for us. Uh, the title of my presentation is uh, uh, The Problem of Increasing Human Energy. Uh, Tesla is so big genius, you know, there are so many aspects of his work. One uh, man can spend his life researching special aspects. For example, I know colleagues who spend uh, their scientific career researching Tesla's coil, Tesla's wireless transmission of energy. Some other colleagues spend career researching Tesla's platelet pumps. And, um, and during my career, I asked myself what is will, what can be most uh, of most interest for the next generation if I try to study and understand Tesla. So first I made my PhD, as you have heard, about the methodology of Tesla's work in mechanical engineering, but because I'm a mechanical engineer. But I was wondering how Tesla worked, what was his methodology? Maybe this methodology can be also part of methodology of next generation. So it's, it is very interesting. Uh, maybe I can say a few things about this. What is in Tesla's methodology? Uh, 
uh, you know what's happened with modern uh, generation. Uh, we are training our students uh, to use uh, machines, computers, in order to help them to uh, have the results. Tesla, on, on the other side, uh, at that time, you know, end of the 19th century, there were no uh, such, such possibilities for Tesla, but uh, uh, he comes somehow intuitively developed uh, some uh, potentials, in, internal spiritual potential that he had. We do not have only intellectual potential, we have emotional intelligence, we know that. And very important part of his methodology of work is also using his power will. Why power of that? Because, you know, if you want to go deep, 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 deep in some, some, some scientific problem, that you must be ready to sacrifice a lot of things. Sometimes, in the case of Tesla and great genius, they were ready to sacrifice their life. Believe me or not, when Tesla claimed in his autobiography that he was upon some very important idea, he was ready to, to die, he was so concentrated on this idea that uh, he believed that some special uh, blood uh, uh, pressure can be, you know, something he will happen in his head and he, he can die. So uh, this was uh, one thing I, I studied a lot, but later on, uh, later on I uh, uh, somehow turned my attention to uh, what I call Tesla doctrine, and I will tell you more about Tesla doctrine later. Now I would like just to, 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 to put some light on some important aspects of Tesla's uh, life and career and the work. Uh, just, uh, we frequently for, uh, forget that, uh, uh, that Tesla was uh, uh, highly distinguished, decorated uh, during his life. He was the life member of IEEE. He was the uh, he he got the PhD degree for many important American universities like Yale and Columbia, from European universities in Paris, uh, in uh, in uh, Strasbourg, in. Uh, uh, many, many other European countries. Also, he was the member of the Royal uh, Institution. It's a very rare, rare decoration. He received it in uh, 1892 when he uh, had a lecture in the Royal Institution. And uh, uh, a lot of medals he, he received during his, his life. So his uh, scientific community and, uh, during his life uh, appreciated his work. At, at least the first part of his life. I will explain you later. Uh, well, uh, uh, in this movie, uh, we, uh, we like to show that uh, actually in order to understand Tesla's life, Tesla's work, we have to understand three main aspects, three main influences that somehow shape his life, shape his system of value. This is the culture and the uh, system of value he received in his family. His father was Orthodox priest, and uh, his uncle was an uh, officer. And the uh, two main occupations in his family was either the priests or officers. This is because Tesla was born in Smiljan. Uh, village Smiljan is now in Croatia. Uh, during the existence of old Yugoslavia, it was the part of old Yugoslavia, but when Tesla was born, Smiljan was part of the Lika border country between Austria Empire and Turkish Empire. So many brave people lived there and uh, they fought for uh, uh, Austrian emperor. And uh, among them was uh, Tesla's father, Tesla, Tesla's uncle, and many, many of his uh, relatives. A second aspect, very important of his life, second influence is European education. Tesla studied in Graz, in Prague, in, uh, now in uh, Austria and Czechia, uh, uh, Polytechnic and Philosophy. At that time, it was uh, 1973 till uh, uh, 1973 till 1881. At that time, uh, the difference between the, the, the disciplines, uh, uh, natural and social, was not so sharp. So there were, they were engineers and philosophers at the same time. So, and the third uh, very important aspect uh, was that uh, Tesla uh, had. Uh, big influence in America from uh, 
from a pragmatic American businessman, and he spent most of his life in America because he realized that there he had the opportunity to research, to invest the money in new, new ideas, to try to, to develop it. Uh, there are, uh, we, we know that today uh, uh, there are, we discovered so far 309 test patents. 112 patents are from the United States and the rest of the patents are the so-called analogs. Analogs means that they are repeated patents in the uh, different countries all over the world. Among all those patents, there are several group of patents very important. I would like to talk tell you a few words about this. First group of patent I would like to, to speak is uh, a so-called Tesla's polyphase system. Tesla invented polyphase system and uh, made a patent, 36 patents on the polyphase system of alternating using production, using transmission, and using alternating patents. Uh, uh, at that time, it was 80, 87, 80, 80, 80. This problem of uh, electrification was uh, new and very important all over the world. And many uh, scientists, groups, uh, companies uh, tried to find a solution. Uh, Tesla, with his brilliant patents, actually joined to Westinghouse Group. George Westinghouse was an American businessman and entrepreneur. Uh, so he uh, invested money into the Tesla patents and started to produce these machines. You can see on your left side is the main Tesla patents of polyphase system, on your right side are the machines, motors, generators that are produced in the Westinghouse factory according to Tesla's patents and principles Tesla gave. Uh, you see the picture of Niagara Falls, which uh, Tesla Westinghouse system actually won the contract, you know. And uh, this was the system uh, which uh, shows how modern electro energetic system works. How we today produced energy in hydroelectric plant or in thermal plant or in nuclear plant, it doesn't matter. Now, then we raise the voltage of the, the current we produce, then we transmit on long distances alternating currents, and then at the end we put this voltage low and we want to, to use it into our homes, into our towns. Uh, now it is so simple that we are talking about this, but at that time it was really something tremendous. On your right side upstairs, uh, up, uh, you, can, uh, you can see just a, a picture of a plate. Uh, we are very proud of the plate. We preserve the uh, original copy of that plate in our museum. And uh, uh, here is uh, written actually that uh, Niagara Falls, uh, Niagara Falls Company, uh, together with Westinghouse uh, Company, Build uh, actually this plant according to nine of Tesla's patents, two of Schmidt patent, one patent of Kennedy, and one patent of Stanley. That means that Nikola Tesla didn't give, give all, all, all the solutions, but he gave uh, some 70 to 80 percent of solutions. So he was the main contributor of it. Why I'm telling about this? Because these Tesla's patents changed the picture of the world at the end of the 19th century. And beginning of the 20th century. This is so-called electrification of the world. Very important. That's the claim that after, uh, you know, in America, when you make a patent, 18 years is uh, uh, validation of this patent. After 18 years, it, it is not valid anymore. And that's the claim that in uh, 1906, after expiring the uh, drugs of these patents, uh, $8 billion was invested into industry based on these patents. At that time, if you want to know what is the money of today, you can uh, multiply by 30 or 40. So, some 250 to 300 billion dollars was invested in Tesla's patents. You can imagine how his patents was, was important in that field. Another group of patent, uh, patents uh, which uh, had the global potential to change the picture of the world is uh, patents uh, related to wireless transmission of signals. At the end of the 19th century, wireless transmission of signals is also was an uh, uh, unknown solution. Nobody knows how to wireless uh, to transmit the uh, uh, signals. This looked very early, uh, based on uh, invention of his uh, uh, coil, 
which you can see in telephonic exhibition. Uh, but also, I'm very glad to say that we saw one coil in the uh, Museum of Science and Technology at the University, uh, Technical University, yesterday, uh, produced by domestic professors and doctors. Uh, this, this device uh, was very important to test because he experimenting with uh, high frequency and high voltage carriage in a, in a very broad range. What, what was Tesla's methodology? When he started to, to, to investigate something, then he create, uh, he create some kind of machine for helping him to experiment. Okay? Then he tried to, uh, to try to find out what, we can, what he can do with these machines in very broad range. That means he produced very low frequency and very low voltage and very, very, very high frequency and very high voltage. And uh, experimenting with this, he only, uh, he's not only realized that it is possible to wirelessly transmit signals by this system, you see on your left side patent on your uh, on your right side patent on your left side. You see the uh, the picture of uh, diagram of how he developed this system. This is so-called four tube circuit system. Every mobile phone has now four tube circuits, but it is of course not in a mobile shape the Tesla device. It's now in the shape of a chip. But actually, antenna grounding and the uh, 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 resonance between tuning between emitting system and receiving system is post-Tesla invention in, uh, in uh, late uh, 19th century. He patented it in uh, 1897. At that time, there were no scientists in the world who had a similar solution. So Tesla was somehow a gambler, you know. He said, I have very valuable patent now. I can commercialize, I can earn the millions. But I will wait. I would like to solve another bigger problem. And this is the transmission of wireless energy, not only the signals. So he was interested not only to, to connect all the people on the earth with, with uh, communication, but also to enable every person in the world some kind of free energy. It's not so, I, but I don't want to, to go in deep into this problem. So, in Colorado space, in 1899, uh, he devised, developed this uh, big Tesla coil uh, of 12 million volts. I must tell, tell you that, that I'm very proud, as the director of the Nikola Tesla Museum, that we, this year, uh, repeat this experiment. We have now in the museum 12 million volt coil, which we showed for the first time to Serbian public in Belgrade on 10 July, when it was the Tesla birthday. It is a modern version of Tesla coil, not uh, built with technology of the 19th century. And I must tell you that it is extremely hard to repeat these experiments. Can you imagine 1899, when our planet was in dark, there were no radio stations, the first automobile carriages appeared on the streets in Europe, the first alternating currents passed from Niagara Falls to, to, to uh, New York. Uh, first airplane of Brother Rice didn't fly yet, you know. Uh, our planet was entirely in dark looking from the space. And Tesla performed some uh, unbelievable experiments and he claimed something really, really sensational that he found uh, in one experiment on 4th of July 1899 that the planet Earth responds to some electrical impulses as a, as a light. That means if you impress certain electrical impulse into the planet Earth under the special condition, then you can, you can get some special phenomena inside of the Earth which uh, are of dynamic state and which can help you to wirelessly transmit energy. I won't bother you with technical details, just to tell you that Tesla received financial support from Jen, John Gerber, uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, John Pierpont Morgan, yes, famous power banker and the founder of J.P. Morgan Bank, which is today so important to know this. And Morgan gave him initial money to build his system of wireless transmission signals and energy. But also Morgan invested the money into his competitors. One of them was his uh, Marconi, the Italian business so somehow Marconi, with more simple technology, transmit uh, signals from uh, uh, shores of Europe to shores of America. And uh, before Tesla demonstrated the possibility of wireless transmitting signals. 
And Tesla at that time stopped in the middle of his project. He needed more money to finish it, but Warren was not interested anymore. And Tesla, uh, Tesla uh, didn't finish this project. Uh, later on, uh, later, uh, later in some curved processes, uh, Tesla, uh, today we, we, we know that Tesla uh, actually invented all these uh, things, but uh, uh, he, he, he was gambling and he lost the game. Some others was. And after an after, uh, uh, unsuccessful trying to make this project, American society somehow ridiculed Tesla, somehow uh, made jokes, you know. Uh, ten years ago he was a famous person in America, one of the most famous, and as, uh, at the beginning of uh, 1900, uh, many, many uh, journalists, scientific, and uh, even many scientists claim Tesla was nothing. Uh, he, he claimed rubbish and so on. So Tesla, you know, was uh, hurted and uh, he didn't realize the American society. At that time, he started to analyze American society as a civilization. And this was the beginning of uh, 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 Tesla's uh, uh, analyzing the trends of developing of modern civilization. In, and in uh, uh, what I call Tesla doctrine, there are many Tesla's ideas regarding the future of the civilization. I will just uh, shortly tell you a few main points of his, uh, his uh, claims. He was asked by one journalist uh, uh, what uh, uh, did he think about uh, the civilization to which he contributed so, so much with, uh, uh, with his inventions. In especially alternate current system transmission and the usage. And he said that uh, this is an unbelievable uh, technological civilization. Nothing similar happened in the known history of humankind. But he said, uh, although the, this civilization is helping us to live in better, to live in more comfort, in more convenience, uh, it is not going towards the true light Culture. Very, uh, two very important key words, please remember, Tesla claimed our civilization is not civilization of true culture and true enlightenment. This is what we should think about, what he wanted to say, actually. And uh, he was asked by a journalist, okay, if you say uh, that uh, our uh, civilization is unsustainable, and Tesla claimed that it will be destroyed some days as many other big civilizations in the past, Roman and Egyptian and many others. Uh, uh, they asked uh, a journalist in why. Uh, he said because this civilization tried to solve one problem, social material. In order to be stable, civilization must solve two more problems, moral and spiritual. Only if you solve so social, moral and spiritual problem, then you have stable uh, base for developing, uh, spreading your civilization. Another very interesting uh, uh, observation, I will read it. I have often wondered whether our development will be mostly in the direction of the artistic or scientific. And I have satisfied myself absolutely that with the progress of time, ideals, uh, all ideals will be smoother and only cold, light science will survive. So he in, actually envisioned uh, that uh, our mechanical civilization will not be in the direction of. Uh, the direction of uh, art, culture, but in the direction of coal and so on. And uh, maybe to tell you two more things that uh, Tesla had very interesting uh, observation regarding uh, what, what is the process of thinking in his time. He said all the scientists uh, like Franklin Morse were clear thinkers. Modern scientists are deep thinkers. There are big differences between clear and deep thinking. I will try to explain later. And final remark, very, very uh, interesting also. He was also asked, uh, okay, if you think that uh, we should go, we should be stable as a civilization, what we should do? Where, where should we invest our energy and our money? And he said, not, uh, uh, he said, a richer part of the world. It was about 19, uh, 1940 before he died. A uh, richer part of the world has enough high level of uh, comfort of existing. So we don't need anymore to invest the money into rising the comfort of existing. 
we need to uh, we need to uh, invest our energy and money into changing of the habits of all people on the planet so all of us can equally enjoy the uh, fruits of our civilization uh, why this why this uh, sentence is why this text test of doctrine i after 40 years of investigating tesla i think is important because uh, uh, as a person as a family man I had the problems with my family, with my children, you know, uh, with my colleagues and my, with my uh, people in Serbia. I was a short-time member of political party, so I tried to join this kind of life. And I tried to understand how life is functioning in my country, you know. And uh, uh, thinking about uh, what Tesla said, actually, I uh, absolutely agree that some kind of balance men need to adopt in order to be uh, to be successful, not only personally successful in the sense that I make my, my career, but also family successful, also socially successful. That means if, if I want to uh, to develop myself, this this is very good idea. But uh, if I don't uh, somehow bring back my knowledge to society, then uh, I'm not uh, fully successful. Man. So there are many of test ways with, with which we can put into the, uh, in the context of modern sustainability theories. You know, I don't know, I was teaching uh, sustainable development on the faculty of uh, uh, Applied Ecology in Belgrade for several years. So, uh, I'm not sure that you, that you know all of you or don't, but I will repeat now. The modern theory of sustainability says that in order to be sustainable in the future, we have to fulfill our needs, but also have a chance for generation yet to come to fulfill their needs. Modern theory of sustainability do not uh, explain what does it mean our needs. You know why? Because we are living in one very consumption culture. And uh, as you can notice all over the world, you can Google and you can understand that uh, you have now 10 major uh, big companies in the world which have income more than three or four uh, uh, biggest state and uh, most developed state of the world. So it is not easy in a modern society actually to, to explain what will be true sustainability. But generally we agree that in order to be sustainable we have four components. We have uh, economical, social, ecological and cultural. Very important. Tesla explained it different. We have social problems, all material problems, and we have spiritual problems. This is the this is the balance. Uh, what else is interesting? We do I like to compare Tesla's theories, Tesla's ideas of modern society and modern uh, insights into our, our trends of developing. Uh, you see, this diagram is very important. This it is done somewhere in the United States, uh, maybe. 10 years ago, uh, it is shown that after between uh, 1980s and 1990s, we start to, 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 to spend more resources than we can afford. If we think in average sense, what does it mean? Well, for example, in the United States, they are spending 10 times more resources than in Serbia, for example. So their biggest uh, uh, so if uh, we all would like to spend like Americans resources, only one billion people can survive here. So maybe you have heard that uh, there are a lot of stories about golden billion. That means that in order to everyone to live wealthy, then no place for six billion people. You must know that. Uh, there, there are many, many, uh, many. Uh, aspects of these theories. I would just like to also to, to show you this one. It's also very important because of the young people. This diagram shows how Americans, young people, uh, 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 express themselves about their system of value. So in the 1970s, most American uh, young people said that uh, to develop a meaningful, meaningful philosophy of life is for them most important. To be well or financially, uh, it was the minority. But you see, in 1980s there was a switch, there was a change. Most of young people after 1980s said, well, we would like to have a good, a lot of 
money, we would like to enjoy this life, we would like to travel. What is encouraging, you see this black line, uh, after 2000 is a uh, tendency to go upwards. That means that young people today understand, under, understand, understand that uh, uh, they want to live well, that they want to be wealthy, but they also uh, would like to have many more. Is it possible? Yes, the answer is yes. But uh, you know, it must be the part of our educational system. Our educational system uh, must not cherish only the skills. It must also develop the, 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 the character of, of, of a young person. Only in that sense, if you if you uh, teach them to, to have skills to solve their uh, social problems, but in the same time to be a person, to think, to have an attitude, to use all their internal powers, you know, then to not to be machines, uh, we will have. Uh, we will have the members of our society which can build a sustainable society. Generally, today we understand that uh, institutions have to be fundamentally oriented towards sustainability, and that means that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, we have we have to, to to develop and to try to uh, understand that uh, today we need more social innovation than technological innovation. Our modern world is full of uh, uh, technological innovation. But our institutions are not ready to accept very fast changes what happens. Uh, later, President of Israel, Shimon Peres, died a few days ago. He said, uh, every morning we wake up, we are waking up in a new world. So a person must be prepared that when he decides something, maybe uh, day after today, tomorrow, it will be not anymore applicable. Uh, my, my point of this lecture is actually that uh, tradition and the knowledge of uh, great people of our past, in case of Nikola Tesla, we are proud he was Serbian, but also he was American, and also he was a member of the world community. And uh, we are very glad to see that the uh, Spanish audience and uh, audience in South America, they receive Tesla as they, uh, they are from their surrounding. Uh, uh, well, I, I wanted to say that uh, we have to, to find somehow a way to integrate in our modern life uh, values of all those important genius people. But it must be oriented towards some practical actions, not that or not in a sense to have some kind of only a theory and to be satisfied just to, to, to from time to time uh, say that they were great. Thank you very much for your patience and uh, <laughs>